What's up, guys? My name is Cornelius Robinson, and this is Overshoot. Today, we're talking about ground pours, so let's get into it. First, let's establish what a ground fill or pour is. A common practice when designing a PCB is to use the empty space for ground. This has a few advantages, such as more even copper distribution for better manufacturability. The fiberglass substrate has different thermal properties than the copper plating. If there is significant copper in one area and a lack of copper in another area, heating the board when soldering can cause it to warp. When filling in the empty space with a ground plane, the board is heated more evenly. While we're on the topic of heat, large ground planes can help cool components that generate a lot of heat. The copper acts as a heat sink, pulling heat away. Another advantage of ground fills is shielding. To be fair, this really only applies to RF circuits, but it's still worth mentioning. Ground planes on either side of a trace, carrying a very high speed signal, can help shield it from ambient noise. The specifics of that are beyond the scope of this video though. Now that we've scratched the surface of why you might want to use ground fills, let's jump into Flux and see how to do it. Let's just go to the PCB tab, and we're done. What you talking about, Willis? <laughs> yep, that's it. We can turn on the visibility to see it, but Flux applies a ground fill by default. You can, however, disable the ground fills by selecting the ground under nets and adding an object specific rule. We're looking for connected layers. By leaving this blank, it will disable all ground fills. Alternatively, we can enable ground fills on specific layers. Now, you might be asking, why would I want to disable ground fills if they're so useful? Well, in some cases, they can actually make things worse. Let me explain. You have to be careful not to leave any floating islands. For example, let's say we have two relatively high-speed signal traces that are separated far enough apart to avoid crosstalk. So far, so good. But we have a copper pour between them that isn't grounded or connected to anything. In this case, each trace can couple onto this plane and actually increase the amount of crosstalk that happens between the two traces. In many cases, we may not want to apply a copper fill without via stitching as well. But that's a topic for next week, so make sure to subscribe to learn more about that. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and I'll see you in the next one.